welcome back to the channel. We're going to do things a little bit different this week. I uh, am currently recording this Sunday night, and I just got back from a four-day conference with thousands of students from all across California, from different FFA chapters for our annual California uh, State FFA Leadership Conference. Great time, fun time, uh, but we're all tired, and I'm sure a lot of you teachers that, that watch my channel uh, that are teaching that we're also there are going to love this for a sub plan for tomorrow morning or just a, a way to ease back into getting back into school after being gone for four days. Um, so we're going to start this new new series where I go over all the uh, drawings in that packet. The first one we're going to do, obviously, start with number one, practice assignment number one, titled Shim. Um, but let's break this thing down and let's follow along. And let's see what we got going on here. So first thing you'll know, if you look at this drawing, down in the bottom, I'm going to name it. So if you ever hear me call a drawing something and I don't specifically refer to this, this is what we're talking. They all have numbers and names. And you'll see in this other box, it says tools needed for drawing. In my packet, I have the icons from Onshape along with names of the tools that you'll be using. If we look at this shape or we look at this drawing, you'll see that I need to use the line tool and the dimension tool. However, if we look at the overall drawing, I could probably draw this with some rectangles. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. However, the way I'm going to show you is the using the tools needed. These are the basic ways. There is other ways to do this. However, this is the way I'm going to show you. If you find another way and you can do it better, leave me a comment and show me or show your teacher and show them how to do it. Last thing to notice, if you follow me up to the top, every paper or every sheet will have a question or two that says you know how to do it. So. If you're doing this for a grade, I'm not going to actually show what that answer is. So you can find it yourself, but I'm going to show you how to do it. But you need to answer that question to prove that you know what's going on. And last but not least, we have the video help. So let's say you watch this video and you have, have still have no idea how to draw it. You go and you look at those tools needed for drawing. It's going to show you step by step how to use the line tool, how to use the dimension tool. So watch the videos on those tools. Then come and watch this and kind of see, kind of use them all together to be able to make your drawing. So let's get a game plan. If we look, I'll put some notes and this note says, make this your origin. So if I look here, I'm going to go over 0.75 and I need to come up one and a half over again, 0.75 up 175. We're going to follow over here down over four, down one and a half over two. We're going to come down two over two, down some amount that needs to add up to five, and I'll show you how we do that. We're gonna go over some uh, amount that needs to equal whatever the top is, and we're gonna come up a distance that I didn't give you. So this shows you how you can take prints and kind of follow along, and you don't always need every single measurement that's on there, okay? Again, these drawings also have some things built in to make you mess up and to make you fail. The problem with that and, uh, you know, like, why would you make me fail? Well, what I'm trying to do is make you run into some issues with some scaffolding and some help so you can figure out, oh, this is how I fix that problem. So if you're ever drawing your own thing and you've never encountered that problem, how are you going to know what to fix and how to change and go from there? So there's a method to my madness. If you stick around, you'll figure out how this goes. So without any further ado, let's get back into on shape and let's get some stuff drawn. So like always, if we're going to draw, we need to start with a sketch. So we're going to click that top plane, hold down shift and S on our keyboard. We're going to press N to normalize that view and P to hide those planes so we can kind of see what we're working with. Okay. In that drawing, I said, make the origin point. That's where we're going to start from. Everything you draw and a lot of these things in my packet, if you do not start from the origin, you're going to get the wrong answer. Okay. Our goal is to figure out the overall area of this shape once we're done. So I'm going to go here line. I'm going to click the center point, of my origin, and I'm going to draw out, I'm going to say 0.75 and enter. And you'll see I now have here, I can continue going, but some things that trip some people up is the, dim the dimensions and measurements being in the way. So what I want to do, I can drag that out of the way. What I don't want you to do, yes, I could delete this. However, now it doesn't have any definition of how long that is. It's not defined. It is still black, but if I were to change something, it would mess up. So 
I've had students draw a lot of these drawings and then delete all their measurements so it looks clean. Just remember that when you're done drawing, you'll click that green check mark and it'll get rid of, quote unquote, get rid of those dimensions, but it's not actually getting rid of them. So just keep them in there for now. If they're in your way, like you said, you can, you can grab them and you can just drag them out of the way. Um, but let's move on. So we're going to go from this corner, with the line tool, L for line. We're going to go up 1.5, press enter. I'm going to go over to the left and you'll see it's going to snap. Okay. Now this is probably where some of you guys are messing up. If I go here and I click, you'll see I have that dotted yellow line. Let me zoom in a little bit. It's saying you want to be in line with your line you already drew. You want to be lined up perpendicular to that point. And you say, yeah. And then I press 0.75 and you'll probably run into this. If this is the first issue you run into. Okay. Now, when your drawing turns red, just press control Z, undo it. What was the last thing you did that made it angry? So let's get rid of that line. Let's draw another line. Well, by lining up, it's going to make it 0.75. I don't have to type it in every time. If I, if I go straight here, I can go and click, and then I can move on to my next one. And by default, it's going to be because it's, it's aligned with a line that is 0.75. So now I could go up and type in my 1.75. And if I were to come and click this line, and if you follow me down here to the bottom, you'll see it'll show me that length of 0.75. But I didn't put a dimension. Yeah, because it's a, it's got some constraints attached to it that make it that dimension. So if you're the type that needs to type in every number, well, then you can't use the aligning constraint. You kind of come past it, make sure it's straight, then you can type 0.75. So if that's part of your method and you want to see all those drawings, that's totally fine. But make sure you're not trying to click exactly on the point. So we're going to move on from here. We'll go up 1.75. We're going to go zoom out a little bit. We'll go over four. I'm going to come down 1.5 over two. And now if you didn't get the red issue here, this is usually where people end up messing up with the red, okay? So if I go here, and we'll let that kind of zoom in, we'll see that for a second. If I line up with that, you'll see that that makes that 1.75. So if I click, and then I try to type two, it's gonna blow up, because how can a line be two inches and also be 1.75? It's impossible. You can't have a line that has two different dimensions. So you gotta pick one or the other. So we'll undo, and we'll draw that line. If the drawing called for it to be 1.75, then yeah, I could click that and go. But again, we need it to be two. So we'll say two. And then we're gonna go over. And right now, if you look, I'm at 2.2, not or 2.302. I could align it with this point by dragging my mouse up, bringing it over, and then clicking. But to show you how to type in, so obviously 1.7 is not two, so we'll type two in that text box, and now I get what I need to, okay? I'm gonna move down. We need to go a unspecified amount. I could do the math, but I'm gonna come back and show you how the dimension tool works. I know that this needs to equal the top, and if I look from there, we know it said four, but I don't need to type it, and then I need to come up here and click. Now, I didn't give you either of those measurements, right? I'm gonna highlight these lines. These two measurements were not given. But what was given is that from this bottom and this top, this dimension is a total of five. So now we're going to use the dimension tool. Now what's cool is, let me delete this here, and let's slide some stuff around. So let's say I don't have a dimension there. For whatever reason, you uh, didn't type in that dimension when you were making it the first time. Letter D on your keyboard. And then you're going to click that line. So if I come back and click this line and then click again, that text box will populate. And I know that needs to be 1.5. So I can type 1.5 and then press enter. Okay. So we're going to use that same logic, but this time, instead of just clicking the one line, we know it's four, right? I click this bottom line. 
but I need the distance from the bottom all the way to the top. So if I click two lines, it's going to give me a point between or a distance between those two lines. If I click OK, and we know that needs to be five. OK, could I have done that math? Absolutely. If we look up here, 1.5 plus 2 is going to give us 3.5. And if we do 5 minus that 3.5, you'll end up with, if we look here, you can do a dimension of 1.5. OK, some things to note about your dimensions. Right now, I just did that, and it's not letting me type in it because it's a gray. It's a driven dimension, OK? Come up here. The top one is going to be a driving dimension. So it's black. I can change this to, uh, let's change it to two. And let me zoom out. And you'll see that the shape will shift according to whatever. And if we look back down at the bottom, that is now one, right? Two plus two is four, plus one equals five. But we want that to remain our actual number. So what I'm going to show you next, you follow me down here to the bottom. I'm just going to draw another uh, rectangle off to the side to kind of show you how this works. Two by two. Because I don't want to give you this answer away. Remember, our goal is to answer this question up here. What is the area of the finished shape? Well, how do you find the area? I'm going to show you how to find it without giving you the answer because I'm sure some of your teachers want you to do this and some of you guys want that challenge. Um, if you're a teacher and you want that answer key, send me an email and I will, I will send it to you. Um, but I, I want this to be able to be used as practice partially for you guys. But again, I still teach and I use it in class. So I don't want to give away all my test answers uh, to my students, but I'll show you how to do it. So we come down here and we look down in this bottom corner. I have this measured details, right? So I'm going to click and you'll see right next to it. It'll pop up with an area. So if I highlight my surface, you'll see the area of that two by two square is four square inches. So if that was what I had to draw, that is what I would do four in my on my worksheet and then I am good to go. Right. If for whatever reason it doesn't pop up, you probably do not have a closed shape. So let's say I deleted this line and I was like, oh, yeah, there's my that's what I'm trying to measure. OK, I come down here, show measure details and you're getting six. Well, remember, that's six inches, two plus two plus two not a square measurement, right? That I need of four inches squared. So make sure you click that accordingly. That is gonna be it for how to do this assignment. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment below on this. I will answer it to the best of my ability uh, without trying to give away that complete answer. Um, and that'll pretty much do it. So I hope you guys are having fun with these, this packet. Those of you teachers that were there this weekend, uh, get some rest and some Red Bull and <laughs> we'll be on our way. So uh, you guys take care. See ya.